In this video, we're gonna be building a live streaming system that is also gonna be handling the video distribution for First Baptist Church of South Lynchburg. So let's go. Hey folks, Asia the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description. So um, I've had a lot of people ask me, how come I always stick to AMD, AMD, this, this, and this, and blah, blah, blah. Honestly, because price and performance is great. But this time around, we're going to be utilizing a GeForce GTX 10, I'm mean 1650, I said 10, 1650 to handle the encoding as well as um, this was honestly the most bang for buck I can get for what we're going to be doing in the system. So let's go through the parts. We're going to be using the Ryzen 5 1600. This is the AF um, model. Let me make sure they actually sent me that. Yes, yeah, it's the AF model. Um, these used to go for $89, but now they're kind of hard to get, so they're going for around like 150. This is gonna get us six cores, and we're gonna get six cores, 12 threads, gonna get us some good performance with this based off of what we're gonna be doing. Now, technically, this could handle the live stream and everything that we're do doing by itself, um, but this one does not have a graphics card in there, so we need to have a graphics card. And we'll be talking about that later. This is just the box. Actually, um, I bought a 450 um, for the system, but I updated it to a 550. So just ignore the box. It is a Corsair, but it is a 550 watt um, bronze certified power supply that's inside of here. For our capture card, we got the Blackmagic Decklink Mini Recorder 4K. Um, we got 16 gigabytes of the G-Skill memory. This is the wrong case for this but um, this is at 3,200 megahertz. I always use this type of memory, really good. We are using a silicone power NVMe 256 gigabyte drive. This is gonna be for the operating system and the applications. Also have a Western, no, a Seagate two terabyte drive just for storage of video if they decide to record everything. We're going to be using, because this is the one that was available compared to the Gigabyte board that I normally use, was the ASRock B450 Pro 4. Be real cool for this. And like I said, we are also using the, the MSI Aero ITX GeForce GTX 1650 that's going to handle. Now, what we're going to be doing in this is they're going to be running live streaming as well as running presentation software as well as powering the multiple monitors that are in the building. So that's why we had to have a graphics card that can have multiple outputs to handle this. I originally had a GTX 1050, but I decided to go ahead and get the 1650, because honestly, the 1650 was $10 more. And as you can see, we have three outputs that we're going to be using. We have two monitors here of the exact same type that's going to be connected here. I'm going to be running the HDMI out from this graphics card. Let me put this back. I'm going to be running the HDMI out of this graphics card into, if I can find it, There it goes. Into an HDMI to SDI converter because some of these TVs are gonna be around 75 feet away. I don't wanna run that over um, HDMI as well as the fellowship hall is downstairs. So we have a bunch of 100 feet of SD, HD, HDI cable, um, three gigahertz or 3G um, cable. And We're going to be splitting that signal and preparing for the future into this mono price 
one in, eight out SDI splitter. So we're only gonna be using three monitors, but it's prepared in the future for to add more. And I know this isn't a part of the computer, but I just wanna give you a layout of how we're gonna do all of this. Now for each of the three TVs, because this is actually a bigger project that I'm actually doing. But anyway, for each one of the TVs, we have the opposite of an SDI to HDMI converter that's gonna be powered over USB connected to the TV. These are gonna be Velcro to the back of the TV. And that's how we, it's gonna get a signal. And outside, I might as well talk about everything. We're also using the V770 Panasonic. This is gonna be their main camera because right now they have an old um, RCA, like the big jump that you used to put on your shoulder. That's what they have. And this is gonna replace that. So anyway, I'm gonna do a little build because um, the build is exactly the same. I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna come back and show you how we're gonna, how this whole thing is gonna set up because I have enough monitors here to simulate exactly what we're gonna do. So let's kick some awesome music and let's start building, shall we? So we got everything installed. I need to go back and activate Windows, but uh, whatever, we'll get back to that. So I got a lot of the software installed. Let me move this out of the way. So we got OBS, we got everything installed. I have the camera connected to the DeckLink mini recorder, got the software installed. So let's take this a piece at a time here. Let's go to our video setup, the latest devices and everything like that. So it's natively looking at the SDI port. Let's go ahead and change that to HDMI. And like I said, the camera is connected. So we should see a signal and we do. We are at 1080i 5994. So might wanna update that so it's 1080p. Um, so let's do that here, which it is now. And as you can see, the signal has changed to 1080p 5994. All right, so we, we know we got a signal coming in. All right, and I'm using the wrong mouse. All righty, so now 
let's go ahead and open up OBS and kind of walk you through everything. Because while I'm doing that, let me show you what I have. If we go to our display settings, we have two monitors showing up. One is connected to the ATEM Mini, so you can see. And then the other one is right there behind me, just a regular one of the monitors that is actually going to be installed with this client. Um, so that's good. So we're going to keep this open. Let's go ahead and just add the deck link here so we can get an image. Select the device. We're not doing SDI, we're doing HDMI. And boom, there we go. So you see all the rest of my <laughs> space here. All right, so let's move this a little bit. Up. So right over here. All right, so we got this camera is showing up now. So we know everything is coming through. So now what are we gonna do? What we're gonna do is the HDMI out, we're going to hook this up to this HDMI to SDI. So let me find the cable here for that. All right, so we got this. This is gonna pull power over USB and I actually have a plug, so if need be. Um, I probably wanna have it connected over USB going to the computer, that way it only has power when the computer is on. All right, so we have our HDMI to the display port. So we're gonna plug that into the 1650. All right, and then we need to give it power. All right, we got power, light is there. I don't know if you can see that right there. Now let's just set this here for a second. And now let's go to, back to our display properties. All right, got an SDI cable, and I'm gonna be testing this to my TV behind me. So the first thing is we need to make sure that this shows up as an additional monitor. So, need to find a plug I can plug this into. All right, let's go ahead and hook this up. Find the SDI in on this. Right there. And now we're gonna connect that to the, um, you can see it, the SDI out from this converter. Power on, and then we need to power on the converter. Now I'm going from DVI to HDMI. There we go. All right, so now we have three monitors. I need to make a mental note on how that is. All right, so let's take a look at it so far. So here's the monitor behind me. And what we wanna see is which monitor is which. Maybe I shouldn't have switched to that. All right, so let's do an identify. This is monitor number one. Monitor number three is back there, so monitor number two is what's going to be for the projectors. I mean, not the projectors, but the TVs. So let's drag this up here to be over here, so you have to swipe up to go to that. All right, boom. All right, we got this here. Now, let me pull this 100-foot um, cable here. And then we're going to connect that to the TV behind me. All right, so we're going to use the SDI to HDMI here coming off of this eight port switch. So this is HDMI out. I'm going to pull this cable from a PlayStation to power this using the, H I mean the USB on the back of the TV. Hook this up here. All right, and then I need to get the 100 foot cable. All right, 100 foot of SDI cable here. Um, I actually personally like the Monoprice Viper cable. Um, 100 feet of that is around like $75. So not terribly expensive. All right, let's go ahead and connect this SDI in right there. 
And then we're going to connect this over to SDI out number eight because that's the closest. All right, everything is hooked up. So now, where is the remote? All right, there we go. So this is going to simulate the same way if we were connected to everything else. So that's HDMI 2 that we're on. And my PlayStation just turned on. And boom, there we go. There's our image going through the SDI splitter so that if we do anything, that's how it's gonna go. All right, so now that we got this here, what we're gonna do is whenever we run this, we have two monitors. So when we do Worship Extreme, the two monitors, which was be this one, these two will be sitting right beside each other. Then my TV is gonna simulate all the other monitors, the televisions inside the church. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna sit on monitor number one. Worship Extreme is gonna be this one as well too. That's how they can see everything that's going on. We're gonna right click on this, do a full screen, and we're gonna pick our output. So I believe that is number three. So as you can see from the TV behind me, this is gonna be how everybody sees everything full screen through OBS. Um, we'll do another capture. So say we do another scene here um, and I'll just say it's um, Worship Extreme for right now. We wanna bring over our capture device here. So that way we're getting audio here. Now I need to make a setting change here because the audio is being captured some way and we don't want that. We want it to only be captured through the capture device. That's why you can avoid echo. And again, it's still here. So why did I miss something? I must have. Oh, we gotta set that to disabled as well too. So now audio is only coming in one channel, boom. All right, so we got this, but this is gonna be for if we were doing Worship Extreme as well too. So what we're gonna do is do a monitor capture, or display capture, excuse me, and we'll do this monitor two. Now, this is, I believe this is the correct, no, this is display two. So this is what we want to capture and we can make a test of this just to make sure we're on the right thing. So let's go ahead and drag Chrome onto monitor number two. All right, there we go. So we know that that's monitor number two and we can just do a display properties again and do an identify to make sure we're on the right thing. Identify excuse me, monitor three, that's what that is. All right, so as you can see, that's what's showing up. So we know that that's what's correct. So let's rename this. And that's monitor three. All right, so we can lock both of those in place. So that's how this was gonna work. So we, the, whoever's operating this is gonna have two screens. One, they can have Worship Extreme and maybe OBS in the background, OBS, is going to do a full screen to monitor number three. That's how everything else in the sanctuary is going to work. And, you know, technically this is my workaround for an A10 Mini because it wasn't really available. They didn't ask for that. It's only going to be one camera for right now. So um, I think that's going to be really cool. Everything has been tested out. I could, I need to go ahead and connect this just to make sure of the speed. But again, this is significantly faster than the 3200G that I normally would use just because they're only using one system to do everything. And, you know, I'd rather err on the side of caution than have it being underpowered. So this system is more than enough to handle whatever they're gonna be using at the church. And task manager, I'll just show you here. We go to performance. And let's show our logical processors, and it's 12. So more than enough power. Um, so it's three times more powerful than the 3200G that I normally use for live streaming. So adding Worship Extreme on top of this, honestly, I know Worship Extreme um, can work with this and live stream at the same time, but the fact that 
The processor is three times more powerful and we have a dedicated graphics card for it. It should be fine. So for all those folks who asked me about doing an install, a live streaming PC with an NVIDIA card, if we go here to output, it's already set to use the hardware NVENC to do that. Now I'm not configuring this right now because I need to do their internet there at the church. But based off of everything else, this is good. Um, Cause I'm actually in my main live streaming system, I'm actually using the um, 1660 for my live streaming as well as encoding. So that's cool. So I think that's about it. This is long, <laughs> ran on pretty long. So I hope y'all like that. Um, as you can see, everything's still working. So I have a me, me, and me. So um, everything works. And the fact that this um, one in eight out SDI switch is gonna be cool because even though we're only gonna have three monitors going into that, they have five more that we just gotta get a converter and a cable for. Um, this actual switch is actually, I got two more of these and this is what we're gonna be adding over to Fifth Street that I'm gonna be finishing up next week that y'all haven't seen yet, but I've already did, uh, me and Eugene have done half the work there and hopefully I will show y'all that next week. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell, that way you get notified when we come out with other videos. And before I close out, I wanna thank the patrons who allow us to make this video possible for y'all. Their names are on the screen right now and you can become a patron as well for as little as $1 a month where you help us train and equip media ministries all over the world. And the link is in the description if you're interested in doing that. Again, this is AJ. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next video later.